morning. Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter. We're going to get started with announcements with um, the Schmitz coming up and giving a, an update on um, the Strengthening Spirit campaign. I'm going to let Chester do the talk. <laughs> Can you tell why? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I'm Chester Schmidt. This is Carolyn Schmidt. For those of you who don't know us, we are chairs of the Strengthening Spirit campaign. Uh, we're here to celebrate and update you regarding the financial portion of the Strengthening Spirit campaign. St. David's has just completed the first of 12 quarters of the giving portion of the campaign and the results are worth celebrating. The grand total of monies thus far counted towards Strengthening Spirit is $1,139,430. Breaking that down a little bit, there were 64 pledges among us. Many of us have chosen to pay our pledges faithfully over the three-year span of the campaign. There are, however, 12 among us who have already completed their pledge. In addition, the Strengthening Spirit campaign is fortunate to receive got 18 um, outright gifts from parishioners, uh, former St. David's clergy, and friends. We celebrate all of uh, this amazing generosity and congratulate those who have completed their pledge commitment. So, bravo. <laughs> uh, finally, we'd like to uh, remind you of the parish meeting next Sunday, which will follow the 1030 service. It'll be in Sanders Hall. We're calling it Next Steps Part Two uh, as opposed to part three, part four, part five, part six. Uh, as, we, as we follow up and we delve a little bit deeper into the options that the vestry will consider, will need to consider for moving forward. So, thank you. Yes, please do plan to come to that all parish meeting um, next Sunday after this service, after the 1030 service. Um, there's a number of announcements on the yellow sheet that you can take home and put on your fridge. Um, tomorrow is going to be a prison ministry exploration meeting at 1230 in Sanders Hall. Um, and then on the 15th, we'll start a group about uh, grief and resilience studying um, Francis Weller's The Wild Edge of Sorrow. At, and that's going to be on Mondays as well. So I'd encourage y'all, if you can, to come to that. Um, and then there are a variety of other other things in here, so please do um, look at your uh, look at your announcement sheet and um, stay apprised of what's going on. We'll be um, gathering together now um, with each other in God's presence.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to, any, to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 133, as found in your service bulletin. Let us read Psalm 133 in unison. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, like forevermore. A 
reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father hath sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nail in his hands and put my finger and the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Before I begin, I want to say that you may know the definition of a true believer. It's the folks that show up the Sunday after Easter. <laughs> Let's pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of us gathered here today be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. I didn't want to go. In fact, I said no. But my bishop sent me to Eggleston Children's Hospital right out of seminary. I had two small kids at home, and I was convinced that at that place I would be alone a place of darkness and suffering and loss, a nightmare. But I was wrong. I had never seen so much light, so much fight. All these tiny little people and their frightened families, they were strong. Miniature heroes, everyone. I worked in pediatric cardiology in the intensive care unit a lot. Babies with walnut-sized hearts that had parts that didn't fit the way they were supposed to. Now, of course, you know that embryos don't smoke. <laughs> they don't drink too much or eat the kind of stuff that clogs their tiny arteries. Consequently, we had some questions in that place for God. Some were tough on the Lord. How could this happen to babies? Fear hung on, but somehow the anger and the fear faded into faith. Surgeons in operating rooms, 
nurses with angels' wings. They all did things that I could only call a miracle. And then there was the ICU, intensive care unit waiting room. Now you'd think I sure did, that it would feel like a tomb, but that just wasn't so. I would go into that waiting room two or three times a day, and I'd stay to catch a glimpse, this might sound odd, a glimpse or a whiff or a whisper of heaven. There weren't any organs or choirs, of course, but it felt like church is supposed to be, something I was never able to copy when I donned my robes and vestments. New parents would stay to themselves at first, but not for long. I would join them and say a prayer and then have to leave. And when I returned, they were now part of a family, not of blood, but connected by their wounds, just like the disciples, by their wounds and their pain and their hope. I was a dope. I didn't get it at first. It took me a while, but soon they all invited me in, not to be some padre, but somehow one who could receive their love and return it. And what did each one of us learn in that place? We learned that we were all in this together. And when we are together, we learned Christian, Muslim, Jewish, and those who had never darkened a church door, we didn't doubt so much anymore. We don't doubt that when we are all together, the cosmic Christ shows up. The eternal Christ always shows up when we are together. Now, Every once in a while, it doesn't happen every Sunday, but every once in a while, there will be a thread that connects all the scriptures in the readings. Like I said, not very often, but it happened today. And check it out. In the Acts of the Apostles, the earliest followers were all there together. They knew. They knew they couldn't make it alone. They knew Christ would show up if they stayed together. And you heard the psalm, how very good and pleasant when kindred live in unity, when we all throw in one with the other. John's letter, 1 John, it makes it explicit. We have fellowship with God and you have fellowship with us and so we all have fellowship with the eternal Christ, walking in the light of life and love. And then, of course, the gospel. Jesus died and was raised. Now, Mary experienced that firsthand. I mean, you remember that, I think. You know, the only other time that the risen Christ came to just one person was to Paul on the road to Damascus. Look it up. And neither Mary nor Paul seems to enjoy the experience too awful much. And then that night when they were all together in John's gospel, they were scared out of their wits, not believing a wink of what Mary had said, but there he was. They were all together. And he gave them the peace and the power that he promised when he said goodbye at the Last Supper. Of course, Thomas wasn't buying any of it. And then Christ comes again when Thomas was there along with the rest of them. Do you get it? <laughs> I think you do. I need you, and you need me. We're all in this together. And it's true, like Mary, we can experience the risen Christ alone. You know, in meditation and prayer, on the beach or in the woods, awed by a sunrise or a sunset, looking out a window at home. But we better be on the lookout 
Because when Christ comes to one person, he rarely shouts. He might show up looking like a gardener or a garbage man, like a stranger in the mall or a child so tiny and small in a bassinet in a children's hospital intensive care unit. Any day, sure enough, it can happen that way, but the promise, the promise, over and over and over again, the promise is that when we are together, Christ will come, offering peace and a love that we'll feel in our bones. We're all in this together, my friends, never again alone. I need you, and you need me. That is, if we want the hurt and the fear to cease and experience a love and a peace beyond our wildest dreams. In the name of God who creates us, God who redeems us, and God who sustains us. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Prayers of the people. Redeeming God, who saves us through the sacrifice and resurrection of Christ, we ask your help to carry the gospel and to reflect your love to all whom we encounter. Sovereign God, in whose kingdom of love we claim our first citizenship, we lift up all nations of the world, endow those in authority with wisdom and understanding that we may all live in peace. Amen. Creating God, from whom all life flows, we plead your forgiveness for our fail failures to nurture this rich earth and for our abuses of it. We pray for ourselves that we may be better stewards for the welfare of all your creation. Healing God, 
who restored so many wounded, marginalized, and afflicted persons to their communities. Help us see the needs of our neighbors and empower us to meet these needs so that all may come to rest in your loving embrace. God of good news, who transform futures through your healing, we remember especially and pray for peace in the Middle East and the Ukraine. Anna, Keith, Liz, Bob, Linda, Dan, the Gamble family, Ron, Bill, Will, Sam, Tim, Jean, John, Richard, and Charles. We remember all those in the armed forces at home and abroad and their families, especially Christopher, Ryan, Carlisle, Caruth, Matthew, Alana, Booski, Charlie, Hunter, and Connor. We also pray for all who suffer dis-ease in body, mind, or spirit, for those who grieve, and for those who concerns only you may know. Living God, who rose again from the dead and who will raise us to eternal life, we remember especially Holly Granger, Jody Gamble, and all those we love yet no longer see. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. be seated for a moment. I wanted to point out that it is the first Sunday of the month, and that means that Stephen ministers will be in the chapel to um, pray some intercessory prayers with you and for you. You would come to the altar rail, have communion, and then go directly to the chapel, and you'll find a Stephen minister there, something that the Stephen ministry group is... Um, starting up, and I hope that we can take advantage of that. Um, if you are new to the Episcopal Church, please know that this is God's table and all are welcome. You would come to the altar rail and stand or kneel as you're able with your hands outstretched like so to receive the bread, and then the chalice will come around and you would take a sip. If you would rather uh, receive a blessing, put your hands across your chest in this manner. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself a perfect offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, God, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say. mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Living God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to, to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Faithful provider, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and resurrection among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Faithful provider, we pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith. 
And I'm so lost. I'm so sorry. And preserve it in peace. Yes. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with David of Wales and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you and honor with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
almighty and ever-living God. the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. 